Hey guys, this is an update on my Steam Play slash Proton video I did a few months back. Actually, I think I did it right after Proton launched, so that might have been actually like almost a year ago now. Um, at least five months ago. I'd have to look to see. Um, so I wanted to update a few things. Proton DB, which is a website run and curated by the community, uh, reports that 5,000 Steam games have compatibility now. And the, of the reports that ProtonDB has received, around 60% of all Steam games reported are compatible. And you can take a look. It's actually a lot higher than that for the top uh, 1,000 games or so like that on Steam. Uh, so the things that are holding Proton back right now is uh, the .NET Framework launchers that a lot of free games and other more popular multiplayer games use. But that can be gotten around with Wine Tricks or proton tricks uh the other thing is anti-cheat and uh eac might not ever be a possibility now but it looks like battle eye is working directly with valve now on getting battle eye running with proton which means that games that are using battle eye like PUBG, daisy arma 3 and so on may become compatible in the future uh this isn't actually going to be a video about compatibility percentages whereas with me of my non-native games, I noticed about 73% were compatible now, like they did launch, and of that only, I think, 13% were in an unplayable state, which is really good. Um, and I've organized my library, and I will do a video about compatibility later on. More I wanted to touch on some new features that Steam has added to the Linux client. So... First and foremost, you can now specify a specific Proton build for a game. Like, we used to have to do that for Elite Dangerous. There was a custom build we were using that's no longer necessary with the latest Proton build. Uh, so you can force a specific compatibility tool. Um, I hope I didn't just... Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, using this checkbox here, which will then give you a drop-down menu, uh, as you can see. And uh, I'm not going to use that because I don't need to. This game runs out of box. And, uh, well, no, not out of box. You have to do some things with Proton Tricks. And uh, I might do a video on that later on. Um, install the .NET framework and uh, BC Run 2015 is all you need to do for Elite now. Uh, so these are the games I have installed right now because I just built a new computer. And uh, I've switched to AMD. I will go ahead and I know my fonts are really big, but that's probably kind of helpful for YouTube videos, actually. So that's the new setup, and uh, that'll be what I'm doing most of the recording on now. I do have an, a couple extra NVIDIA graphics cards that I might use to do some videos on GPU pass-through later for the games that currently aren't working with Proton. So something I wanted to update about is something that was a big problem when this originally launched because of the way that DXVK works. If you don't know about DXVK, I'll link the project in the video description. So, this is a really cool new feature. This is shader pre-caching. Uh, what that means is that for Vulkan and OpenGL, Steam will download the shaders and cache them before the game is launched if there are some available for your specific setup. So like for Risk of Rain 2, it downloaded 45 megabytes, and these were actually downloaded beforehand and uh, Steam had bugged out because my connection's awful. Um, but that's like 70 megabytes and that's like 100 megabytes of shader pre-cached content. So I wanted to show you guys some performance and how well the shader pre-caching works, like for a game like Elite Dangerous. Hopefully I don't have the same problem I did last time with my connection timing me out from the launcher, but we'll see. Um, and so shader precaching should make the game stutter less and they should it should make the games like elite that has to load the shaders when it launches launch faster so once the launcher loads hopefully we will give this a go i wanted to do this in one take i may actually end up editing it after the problems i've had this morning technical wise maybe not okay so let's go ahead and launch Elite, which may still take a moment because it's Elite. It takes a little while. 
Well, maybe not. We're going to go ahead and skip the splash screen. And I'm going to notice some performance loss, like in the FPS counter at the top of the screen. But you can see how fast this is loading, and this has to do with the shader free caching. They used to take exponentially longer when launching the game with the XVK. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll actually go into the game and show some performance. Uh, and I am going to get a little bit of performance hit because I'm using software rendering in OBS. Let's do a private session real quick because... I made some people mad last time I was playing, and I hope they're not camping the station. Oh. As you can see, I'm getting 60 FPS. I'm gonna go ahead and just spin around and dock real quick so that you can see the performance, any performance impact that might actually happen uh, within the station and so on. So let's go ahead and go closer and you guys can see how awful I fly. minor frame rate drops so far so maybe something has improved because of the pre-caching i was getting a little bit of like 10 to 20 frames stuttering before but that might have been because i had the game running in ultra at the time So, as you can see, I'm getting 60 FPS in the station, a little bit of screen tear. Well, you might not actually be able to see the screen tear because that's on my monitor because it's crap. Anyway, uh, this is a huge improvement. This was a game that just would not run uh, four or five months ago, and now it runs really, really well. Uh, it required a custom build for a while. It shows how quickly this project is improving. So I'm going to go ahead and exit the desktop and talk about a couple other things real quick. Um, and then that might be the, the video right there. Just, uh, basically it's really worth checking out right now. Um, okay. It's still closing. Um, I do recommend, uh, I'll actually do a couple recommendations at the end of this in terms of things to do to make your life a little bit easier. Okay. So risk of rain, very, very popular about a month ago, ran out of box day one that it launched which was really phenomenal the performance is really really good um i'll touch on something that really impressed me so rage 2 came out last week and it was broken uh when it came out before the end of the day it was functioning after a patch came out so this is something that Valve is really supporting and really pushing forward, which is why I think it's worth it for every person that uses Steam to check out. And I think it might actually be downloading more shader content. Yep. So, all of that will get pre-cached. This is the current Steam beta, and then within another few updates, it'll actually get pre-compiled, which means that it'll already be there and compiled and ready for the GPU uh, by the time you launch the game which is really, really cool. Uh, it's going to really improve performance. In fact, it might make some of these games that are a little bit are performing a little bit worse than they do on Windows perform better than they do on Windows, which is incredible. Um, so that's about it for the video. Uh, I know it was kind of a short one, and it took me a while to get out. I've had a lot of technical problems. I was building a new computer. I put in a new air conditioner, which really affected my sound environment and uh, 
so on and so forth. So I do want to cover a few other things. So I recommend binding X kill to a key while you're doing this if you're testing a game. So uh, this is, it's called X kill. That's it in the void repos. And so I have it on shift windows key X. And what it does is it turns your cursor into uh, a kill command for process. And so that, that killed the process. And the reason why I recommend doing that is some games do not quit gracefully and you may need to do that, especially if you're testing a game that doesn't have a lot of reports and so on and so forth. It's going to make your life a lot easier than going into HTOP and looking through all of the processes and so on and so forth. So um, that's about it for this video. And I assure you that the next video will be edited. It's going to be about online scams and I'll be up in the next five days. Thank you.